The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. back it is wednesday november 21st one day before thanksgiving <laughs> a little early for thanksgiving this year but still we'll take it 6 p.m pacific standard time and that means it's time for another installment of southern nevada sports news coming to you from wwdbtv.com my name is bill miller co-host along with jeff Bellnip. and we are very happy to once again give you our wonderful insights on sports world in general <laughs> As well as, uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Some of our marketing friends that are out there in abound. Yep. Yeah, and uh, which is going to be leading to our initial segment here, which I will get to in just a couple of minutes. But once again, it's very good to be back in the saddle again. Absolutely. Good to see you. Another very strange week in sports. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, we're uh, hopefully going to be joined by our buddy down the ETL. Yes. Uh, in uh, segment number two, uh, Torrance Hall. Yeah, because I think I put the whammy on him about three weeks ago on my predictions for the Falcons, and uh, it has not exactly come to fruition. Uh, I am so sorry, Torrance. Uh, that was not my intention. Uh, but, uh, you know, also we had just a probably the best NFL game in some time now. From uh, for it, my recollection, I guess. And I actually missed the game Yeah, because I was doing a couple of things. but As billed. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that people could not have asked for a better money, <laughs> considering the week before was San Francisco and uh, the Giants uh, combined. I think they were like three and thirteen or three and fourteen. Yeah, or something Good crazy. Game though came down to the last. Play. Yeah, yeah, it was actually you know it wasn't a bad game, but <laughs> Monday night's game was one for the records. Yeah, and uh, we'll get to that as well. But we are going to first be joined by actually uh, someone that we've known from our uh, Vegas Kings years. Yep. Yeah. Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, a young man who has uh, gotten off the football field. Maybe he's still on it. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he is now in a realty business. And uh, and we're going to call it East of Mississippi. That's right. And this is a realtor at large, Quentin Campbell. How you doing, Quentin? Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? Man, we are doing great. And thank you very much for joining us. How long has it been uh, since you were Vegas King now? I mean, are we talking about eight, nine years? Woo, yes, sir. It's back in um, 2009. Okay. <laughs> it's, been, right. it's been a long time, uh, and I really enjoyed it out there. It was, it was a great time. And um, that was the year uh, that Michael Jackson died and um, and uh, buddy uh, Steve McNair down here in Tennessee. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah that's that's right. was, that was a crazy year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was still a, it still actually wasn't a bad year, just not for those individuals and their families. Um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, you have clearly gone on and now you're in real estate, which, by the way, congratulations. Um, Thank you very it, much. It, I appreciate it. I always like to hear, uh, you know, some of the former football players that we were involved with, and you know, have gone on to careers and, and we're thinking about it. And uh, and I have to ask you this. When you were playing, you know, with the Kings back then, were you thinking about real estate? I mean, was that something that you were targeting? Oh, no, sir. Not at that time. I was not targeting real estate at all. You know, I was just uh, concentrating on football, and I had a great time, and uh, I enjoyed playing with all the guys, and it was, it was just an awesome atmosphere, and, and I really appreciate it. It was, it was awesome. That's good. Yeah, well, it was fun times for us as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was uh, – the, the Kings were a great team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we was really good. We was really good. We uh, had a lot of outstanding players, and sometimes I was believing, like, man, why come these guys ain't, you know, at the next level, you know? And uh, some guys on the team was running like a four-two-four, and just all kind of crazy numbers. I was like, "Goodness!" But man, hopefully those guys are doing well now. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. So, when did you get started in real estate? Uh, I started back in um, 2015, and um, uh, with uh, a couple of uh, clients, and um, we got started from there. Uh, Stacy and Chris Booker took me in um, back then, and. Um, Showed me the ropes, and uh, here I am to this day. All right.
right, all right. Now, um, east of Mississippi, explain that. East of the Mississippi, it just, uh, so, you know, people down here, call it, we call it the EOM. You know, a lot of people uh, around the United States talk bad about, you know, the SEC and talk about we overrated and things like that. Uh, and, you know, guys down here would say, hey, proof is in the pudding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that, that's true because <clears throat> in the SEC game that uh, I watched a little bit of last week, yeah, Citadel, Alabama's opponent, Citadel, Citadel is who they oh, play. Okay. Yeah, yeah Citadel. And and let's uh, let's on, throw Keith, this in. Let's, let's get off some of these paydays and, yeah. and actually play somebody. Citadel like, in November. Yeah. Okay. We forgot to throw okay, that that it. aspect okay. in. Okay. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How many How many people play top tier teams week in and week out? I mean, sometimes guys, you got to get a break. Well, they got well, it all let, right. Let's see. Uh, Michigan started out against the number three seed. I thought their break was against LSU. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, uh, guys, uh, like I said, you know, I, I've been, like I said, I play with the Kings and seen the teams in the Pac-12, the Mountain West, and teams like that. And then, you know, over here at the SEC, I see the teams over here. I mean, you know, I just think it's, it's, it's a big difference. It's a real, real big difference. And, and like I said, until you experience it and see it in person, yeah. it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Well, I'm not going to – listen, I'm not taking anything away from the SEC. It's rough and tumble. And week in, <laughs> week out, you know, you could get your hash handed to you. You know, and, you know, Alabama just happens to be an extraordinary team uh, this year. Uh, that is, you know uh, – and, again, you know, I'm not sure who may beat them. Uh, I'm thinking probably Clemson. Georgia. You know, they Georgia. play Georgia in two weeks, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, they play Georgia two weeks. It's, yeah. it's going to be but a, it's gonna a be bit, tough. But you know, overall, the SEC is probably the strongest you know conference in uh, in collegiate football. I mean, yeah, they. I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due. That doesn't mean right. I, uh, being a Pac-12 guy doesn't mean I like it. It just means that I'm, I'm willing to give credit where credit's due. Well, I can tell you this: that one of my favorite games, like literally ever, was a few years back when when. Uh, Auburn actually upset Alabama. Oh, yeah. And I was watching that game with kind of one eye, you know, and then I, I kind of thought the game was going to go to overtime and Saban tried to go down and kick the field goal to win the game. And mm -hmm. when he kicked it, the, my first thought was, I don't think he's going to make it. Got enough leg. But I looked away from the TV, <laughs> and, and I, I heard the TV, and the guy's like, he, he's bringing it out. He's to the 10, to the 20, cuts back to the 30. <laughs> he could go. And I was like, wait a second, you know? So I was actually walking out of the room, and I, like, beeline back into the room. Like, if you can imagine me running in and diving into the room to, like, watch the end of that game. The it, it, One, it was extraordinary that it happened. Oh, it was unbelievable. But immediately the, Campbell, the, the, Campbell, the camera <laughs> went directly to Nick Saban. Of course, yeah. And, <laughs> and that look on his face was, did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, right. Like right. he was, I, I was just getting ready to, you know, to set up for, you know, overtime. And, yep. Yeah. Um, right. Just one of those wild moments, and you know, again, I, I, I really don't know who's going to beat Alabama. Again, I think it's probably going to boil down to Clemson. I think Georgia will give them a game. Yeah. I think they will absolutely, and it may even come down to overtime. But I think that they're going to roll in, uh, and it's going to ultimately come down to a championship game. Well, I mean, right, guys, and like, see, since I get, I get to see Tua, I saw Tua last year here at Vanderbilt. Uh, it's just a clear night and day difference between him and Jalen Hurts. And the guy just throws the ball all over the field. And he is a West Coast guy. I give him credit, Tua. <laughs> and, and, and he is absolutely phenomenal, guys. I mean, he just throws the ball all over the field. And he does have a knee injury right now. But let's just see if it holds up. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be big. And, you know, obviously – just playing Auburn this week is going to be big just because it's a rivalry game. Oh, God, yeah. Then they have to go to oh, Georgia, yeah. and then depending on what happens with Michigan this week, they would probably play Michigan after that, um, which Ohio State obviously has an opportunity this week to play spoiler. Right, right. For once. So, you see, just think about the teams you just named, Jeff. They play uh, Auburn this week. Then they got to play Georgia. And then they probably have to play Michigan. You know, and right, so, and so, so that's what I'm saying. So, let me, so let me go you probably off. need a little cupcake game every now and then. Okay, so let me give you some <laughs> cupcake games. Okay, so Louisville, 
who maybe in the past when they took the game was probably a team that was decent, but they're trash this year. They played Mercer in week one. I mean, come on, Mercer. They play, they play Arkansas State at home, and then they went into the conference. They're off-conference games, so let's list their off-conference games. All right, all right. Arkansas State, Mercer, Louisiana Lafayette, and Citadel. I mean, come on, play somebody. <laughs> Listen, and let's face it, Louisville hasn't been the same since somebody with the initials LJ left. Right. That, that guy mm. wasn't going to be good <laughs> in the NFL that's yeah. starting now? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah, you know, and again, I, I've just never quite understood why this deep in the season that they tee these teams up. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it, you know, they could, I guess they, on one hand, they could say, oh, we're just trying to share the wealth. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and for those teams, yeah, there's, there's an, an obvious payday. And those teams are never, right, gonna, right. never ever going to play uh, a team as you know good as Alabama in their own conferences. Right. It's just never going to happen. So essentially, that's their bowl games, and I get that. Right. But, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, but you know, it's kind of a wink and a you know a nod and a smirk that we sometimes say these things. Well, you know, I'm, to Cit- to Citadel's credit, the game was ten to ten at the half. Yeah. Hey. Well, you know, starts yeah. at zero zero too. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. Think about it. The Citadel scored more points than Michigan State and LSU combined. That's true. In those, <laughs> in those two games. Yeah, nice, and that's awfully nice of you to point that out. Um. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? Honestly, those two, those were two ranked teams, which I believe were over over ranked. And last year, if you watched the show last year when we did the the bowl yeah. uh, previews, I actually predicted that the SEC would have a losing record in the bowls, and that that happened. So I understand. The thing but, is, when they, they, have a lot when, they of times, man. when these teams go when out they, and start they playing don't other the, teams, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, when these when these teams start stepping out and playing other teams, the, the conference really isn't that good. I mean, this is my opinion, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, we'll we'll definitely see okay. what happens this year. Well, because a lot of the teams here, when they don't make it to the SEC championship game and they got to go to the bowl games, yeah, they care a little bit, but it's not the same intensity level. If that makes any sense. Okay. Well, in in my opinion, these guys are playing for a career, so they should be out there balling. I mean, it shouldn't matter like who they're that's playing. That's true. Yeah, who's your yeah, team? That, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah, are you? Uh, who's your team? Who the Tennessee Vols? We uh, we're, okay. we're struggling well, down here. Uh, Rock, <laughs> my, Rocky we've Mountain been Top, huh? For a few years now. <laughs> yeah, it's been a tough. Uh, yeah, I know some truckers down there that uh, that I work with, and these guys are pretty hardcore, and they've been. Uh, yeah, they've been really tying them on lately just to kind of get through the season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, like the, I said, we got a uh, Alabama uh, former coach now, and, uh, Coach Pruitt, and um, he's turning it around pretty good down here now. He's uh, getting five stars into the building now and uh, plucking kids away from Georgia and Alabama a little bit. So he's uh, got some good recruiting ties down here, and uh, hopefully they get it turned around soon. But right now it's, you know, uh, we uh, have a chance to go to six and six this week. Uh, we we'll play Vanderbilt. And I like Vanderbilt too, so I'm kind of torn there. And uh, like I said, whoever wins that game gets to go to a ball game. So it's been rough for both of them, but um, ho- hopefully, you know, the boss will out. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, so you're down in Tennessee. Are you a uh, a Titans fan as well? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm a Titans fan. <laughs> oh, we you know, didn't have to say it oh, like man, that. A long pause. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, look, we beat Philly. We beat Dallas. We blast the Patriots. We lose to Buffalo. Can't win anything. And we lost to the Colts. I mean, you know, we're up so up and down. It just, uh, it's kind of hard to cheer every week, you know. It's, uh, which Titans team are we going to get this week? Yeah. You know, after seeing the, uh, the Monday night football game with the Rams and the Chiefs, I'm just like, Oh man! And I apologize to you guys in advance for when we Titans play the Texans Monday night. You know they got over a hundred points scored. We'll be lucky the Titans get a hundred yards in that game. So uh, <laughs> it's going to be knockdown dry guy. So you know, uh, you know Titans they pretty much two yards in a cloud of dust. You know, and so we got this new offensive coordinator Matt Lafleur coming from the LA Rams. A lot of the fans we was excited. You know, you know West Coast we're going to sling the ball down the field. You got Marcus Mariota. And again, oh yeah, for y'all, a lot of people over here in the East Coast just can't get Mariota's name right for anything. Right. They be saying Mariota and this all type of stuff. It's Mariota, oh, you know. Come on. And, and people just uh, 
uh, like I said, wishing that they would throw the ball down the field like uh, the Rams and the uh, and the Chiefs do. That was an awesome game. Oh, yeah. it was it was crazy. It was like watching a video game. I mean, it really was. Uh, and as strange as it sounds, I mean, both defenses did have big impact plays. But yes, they did. When you look at the score, you'd be thinking like, what? You know, were they like playing with 10 men? <laughs> Uh, you know, what gives, but both teams had big defensive plays, you know, that kind of added to the, uh, to the totals. Well, one of the things that made it tough for Mahomes is he just made mistakes that cost him points. Yeah. You know, I mean, he threw, right. up, he fumbled the ball, he threw some interceptions. I mean, he, he, he made mistakes that really put either where they scored straight out or they put him in a real bad position to be able to score. Yeah. So, so I mean, well, that, think about that five turnovers, by him, and they still put up 51, 51 points. points. Unbelievable. <laughs> and, and you probably and lost. I, that's the only NFL. <laughs> and lost. That's the only NFL game where a team has scored fifty and lost. And lost, yeah. And, yes, yes, that's correct. I actually didn't know that until the next day. I didn't really when I saw the score. I was like, wow, that's a, that's a lot of points. I didn't realize that that had never happened before because we're used to watching college ball. Where that right. happens a lot, I mean, especially down in to, Texas. With Mahomes. Uh, right. You know, they talk about that legendary game with Mahomes against um, – Mayfield. Mayfield. Yeah. And between the two right. of them, I think they put up like 1,200 yards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so and, he, and that was the first non-Tennessee uh, Titans football game I ever watched in its entirety. I normally don't watch games all the way through, but that one I could not get my eyes off of. That was great. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, you know, for, you know, for ESPN, ABC – uh, and uh, for the NFL, it was a win, 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 all the way around. Um, they, well, I think they said what eleven million viewers or something. Yeah, like more than the world. Oh series. wow! Yeah. And uh, it was, you know, it was just like I think that, and it lived up to the billing. Yeah, uh, I mean, sure, you know, sure they, you, you had two teams at nine and one going in. For me personally, um, you know, the Kansas City has always been my AFC team because right. I've got family in Kansas City, so the Chiefs have always been near and dear to my heart. You know, but I'm an uh -huh. LA homeboy. You know, so, uh, you know, and I was rooting for the Rams, and it was just like I was just in wa enjoying watching the game. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was like I really didn't have a dog in the fight. Actually, I did. But it was just watching. I was going like, where is this? It, I'm thinking, okay, overtime has got to be, you know. Here we're and going. Bill and Jeff, I'll tell you who really lost in all this was really Mexico. Because oh, Mexico yeah. had an opportunity to, to be on the grand stage, and they let us secure a concert, just mess it all up for them. Yeah. yeah, that was their opportunity to shine right there, and they just totally blew it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they you you would kind of think that they knew that was you know they had the schedule a year ago, you know, so they right. knew that like this was happening. Sneak up on them. <laughs> so they were, did they just think, well, yeah, so we're going to do a concert, you know, yeah. a week before. Where, Don't we have something going on? Yeah, in hundred thousand people are going to be there, and then. <laughs> Then you think you're going to have the field ready. I mean, come on, let's be serious. You know, and exactly. just put down some turf. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, you, 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 and it's like, this thing was at is atrocious. Yeah. You know, yeah, right. they were still having soccer matches there. So did they have a tractor pull the day after? That's I don't going. know, but <laughs> it looked like, you know, and I really, honestly, I do not blame the players for saying no way. You know, right. This right. is our livelihood. These, you know, you know, we we we're we're not going to do it. And uh, right. I think had it been sort of, eh, well, we'll see, or well, let's go down there, and well, maybe they can pull a rabbit out of a hat. But no, they spoke up. They spoke up loudly, and uh, and they made a move. And the Coliseum, you know, was just rocking and rolling. Oh, it was yeah. the first Monday night sure game was. since 1985. Wow, I didn't know. Uh, wow. In the Coliseum, and so wow. and it, and it was just an absolute legend. Well, I was down in L.A last weekend and and drove right past the coliseum and i was actually thinking man i really should stay an extra day because they were actually giving <laughs> tickets away to that game i'm not surprised oh I mean, wow because it seats like 80 80 000 plus yeah. right and right. uh you know at a certain point you know if you go online usually uh down the espn they'll have the uh the ticket company that uh last minute tickets as you can get and sometimes i see tickets for like twenty dollars yeah you know, oh wow! And uh, they'll say they'll have like X thousand. And in for one game in Dallas, they had three thousand left, and they were starting at five bucks because they have standing room, right? Where you could uh, stand in uh, you know the Dallas Stadium and watch. And considering their jumbotron, um, you know that's not a bad deal at all. I, I'd pay five well, bucks to I, stand. I remember uh, exactly. a few, a few even to watch the Cowboys. <laughs> a few uh, years uh, back, don't give me started on that. 
<laughs> a few years back, I do remember Cleveland giving away tickets like towards the end of the season. That was yeah. one of the years it was that they were defeated. Yeah, yeah, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some games coming up this weekend. Do you want to give us a couple predictions for uh, for your uh, pros this week? No, let's go college uh, first. Let's go college first. What do you think? Who do you think is going to win with Michigan and Ohio State? Michigan and Ohio State. I got a good set of Michigan going to win this ball game right here. Uh, Ohio State, they are on and off a little bit. Now, wasn't it Maryland they played? They better squeak by. Oh yeah, Maryland. Yeah. Maryland. Yeah, yeah, they better, they better squeak by Maryland. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Michigan has a good thing going here, and uh, I think they're going to pull it out and get into the uh, to the championship game. So, Bill, did you see Wade Lee's in the the fake that he pulled on uh, on Ohio State? Yes, I did. Yeah, we we had Wade on the uh, the show. Uh, was it a couple a, of weeks ago? A couple yeah. of weeks ago, yeah. and uh, you know we were talking about the Ohio State game coming up in terms yeah. of their big games coming up, and yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, the fake was beautiful. I mean, it was like textbook exactly how you're supposed to do it. And I was telling Jeff before the show, uh, and I said, uh-huh. you know, if Michigan doesn't beat Ohio State this year. They may never beat them for another four or five years because, yeah, be I, I mean, they've been softened up. They, uh, Ohio State <laughs> is clearly kind of sketchy, you know. Right. But, uh, you know, if they didn't, if they can't find enough from film from that uh, Maryland game uh, to do a number on Ohio State this year, then you know, I think it might be the last year for okay. So I have your a boy question. Harbaugh. I have a question for both. No, that is never going to happen. He's never leaving Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, oh, okay. Yeah, so, okay. I, I, have, I have a question for both of you guys. Michigan right. goes in to Ohio State, smashes Mich- smashes the, the Buckeyes, right? They should. And I mm-hmm. hope Brett's not listening because Brett already probably just pulled his hair out if he's listening right yeah, now. Or ran <laughs> off the side of the road. Right. Yeah. He's probably like, dude, this dude's lost his mind. I'm sure my phone's going to be blowing up in a second. But in the event that they do go in there and just destroy them and really, like, you know, just, you know, put a, the handle on them, mm-hmm. do you think that they get any credit or any chance of beating Alabama at that point? Because that's who they're they're still slated to play. Yeah. What do you think? No, they'll, they'll get a ch- – yeah, somebody has got to – do they have a chance? Well, yes. I, mean, I think that Al- – if Michigan plays Alabama right now, Alabama's minus 17. You know, I still – but – and this is all predicated upon, you know, honestly, Tua. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, correct. you know, right now I think there's still a question mark, you know, in terms of you know, you know uh, how healthy it. He certainly got a week off last week. Yeah. Um, but I, but you know, he's you know he's going to be you know he's going to have to do some scrambling against those boys from Georgia, and from Auburn, yeah, that's right. That's you know, right. and you know those those are two teams that are going to get after him. And let's face it, I mean, defenses are like sharks; they're they're looking for the wounded. You know, and yeah. uh, and if they smell blood in the water, then they're they're, they're going for the gusto. But here's yeah, they, my they're thing: they're going to be going for leg. I, I can see that already happening. Oh, God. I, you know, I see you know Michigan beating Ohio State. Yes, doing it right. Run. And I think this being the crescendo for Harbaugh, because guess what NFL job is opening up at the end of this season? Detroit What's Lions? That? No, not Detroit. <laughs> I'm talking about the Holy Grail of football. Uh, Should be the Cowboys. Detroit's- Oh, the Cowboys. No. It should be. Where you have the owners are the fans. Now, that's the last clue I'm going to give you. Green Bay? Green Bay. Oh. You know, where you don't have an owner. You think he could actually work for someone like Jerry Jones? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But no, Green Bay, the right. fans yeah. own the team. They're not into, right. you know, coaching retreads. Nobody's going to be calling down, why are you playing this guy, why are you that? At the end of the game, they interview the head coach, not the owner. Yeah, I'm thinking this is – and if you talk about dream jobs as far as NFL coaches are concerned. I thought Gruden had the dream job. Yeah, no, Gruden got the payday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like, like I said, over here in the, in the East Coast, over here, what do you guys think about John Gruden? You think he's just dismantling the team on purpose in Oakland since they really don't care about it no more? That's how we view it over here. I mean – He really doesn't care about that no more. My, my personal opinion is that he's – putting together the team that he wants so what this mm-hmm. is what i think he's gonna have five first round draft picks it's but it's, it's five three, it's five oh my God. Yeah. yeah yeah and they'll get one or two right and that mm. but building a young team doesn't always work so he's gonna have to like get some sort of free agency happening yeah. oh yeah but i mean my opinion is that he's he's establishing the team for las vegas 
because even going into mm -hmm. the, the last year in Oakland, Oakland really doesn't want them there. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're already having issues with the, where they could not be able to even play in Oakland. That could be, you know, the, the Oakland city has already threatened to sue the, the team for leaving anyways. So oh, wow. I kind of think that like, they're just kind of dusting their feet a little bit. And, and just kind of looking forward. Well, I, th I think they're clearing the books in terms of, you know, having some money around for free agency. Yep. Um, wow. You, but if you do, then why start with, you know, $100 million with your head coach who, you know, come yeah, on. Yeah, but that's not, that's not part of the salary cap. Yeah. No, so, I'm just I mean, saying. They, they, if they can you're, afford that. No, the, the, the rumors are that the, the, the Raiders are strapped for cash. Okay. Well, they're uh -huh. built. They're, I mean, they laid out five hundred million dollars, so yeah. It probably. Yeah. So, but, you but know, I think they have probably good credit, considering they're one of thirty-two NFL teams. Yeah, but if anybody's going to screw up five first-round draft picks, it's the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. Well, okay. no, it's the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Well, no, but, the Browns have already proven that. You know, but <laughs> so, but joining them, but, but joining them will be the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. They will get one, maybe two of those first-round picks, and then after that, it's going to be, you know. It's like any other well, team. It it's it's like any other team it. that has a first round pick. I can, I can tell you this: that if you want to clear some salary, and I'm Oakland and I'm Gruden, the person I'm clearing it for is Le'Veon Bell. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give him the forty five million dollars that he wants. I'm gonna give him the seventeen million dollars that he wants, and I'm gonna have a running back. My running back position is set for two, maybe three years. Four years, maybe. Yeah, three, four years. Two, yeah, yeah, tops. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, what do you what do you expect out of a running back? I mean, no, seriously. I well honestly, I I expect that you know if you're going to pay somebody that kind of money, uh, I would expect to get maybe five or six years. Out well, of I mean, it. if he's seventeen million dollars a year and you only want forty five million guaranteed, that's two and a half seasons. Wow. Or less than three seasons mm -hmm. anyway, because yeah. fifty one million would be three seasons, right? Right. So I mean, you're really only ex in really expecting him to play three years at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I um. And, and believe me, there's 80 guys down the pipeline. Well, that are he, if he out of the goes anywhere, it's going to be probably Dallas because you know who has the big fat wallet. Well, the Lions uh, have some room too. Yeah. Well, he's not going to go to Detroit. Well, Lions are one of the very few teams that'll actually give them a guaranteed contract, though, yeah. and they've proven that yeah, with Calvin he, and uh, he, Stafford. He wants to stick around the playoffs, and with Dallas, you're always going to be sniffing around the playoffs. Wait, hold on. So the Lions have made the playoffs three the last four years. That's not good enough? Nah, not in terms of, uh, you know, them winning a Super Bowl. Well, I'm not trying to be well, mean. they got to win it at some point. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting myself – okay. I, that's not how the, I meant that well to come out. You might as well give it up to Houston. They're 7-3 and three right now, but they've never been to a Super Bowl. And, they, and well, they're not going <laughs> to be going to one anytime soon. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if I'm Le'Veon Bell, I'm going to, you know, you're looking for that stage. Yeah. Okay. And that stage is not Detroit. I, it, playing it's eight games be, inside is it's a gonna good be idea. Da It's going to be Dallas. And suddenly he is the face of the franchise. Yeah, but he, Ezekiel Elliott's already there. I mean, can you afford to pay both of these guys? Uh, I think Jerry Ooh. Jones can. And I think if anybody goes, you know, uh, I think that they will design – in offense where they probably put because Bell is also that slot receiver as well. Yeah. You know, so he you're kind of getting two two for one in terms of the position that he can play. Sure. So if you have him in the slot and you have Ezekiel Elliott, that becomes a you know, right, well who am I guarding here? Well, it would just be another reason why Dallas would go eight and eight. Yeah, oh they're just you know, like listen, that doesn't mean they change. <laughs> You know, they're always going to be <laughs> mediocre at best until they get rid of their GM. Oh, and that doesn't seem to be happening anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon, soon right there. Yeah. yeah. So, so you guys think Jason Garrett's doing a good job out there, or it's time for him to go too? Uh, you know, look, he's the you know, his Jerry Jones' youngest son. He's yeah. not – He'll, they'll find something for him to do. I thought that was Romo. But, no, Romo was – Yeah, Romo too. I think Romo was adopted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was definitely adopted. But, you know, I, I think uh, – He's in an, an, you know, it's just an untenable position. Everybody knows that, you know, he is essentially, you know, he has to, you know, take his orders, marching orders from Jerry Jones, you know, and it's it's just one of those kind of jobs where he has, you know, I hey, look, I can do this. They pay me enough money. I'm the head coach. I got all these perks. I get to go to, you know, the, to, you know, to the owner's house for Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner and. Okay, All these good things. So, since we're talking about Dallas, let's start our Thanksgiving picks from there. So, we got Washington at Dallas. Can we talk just a little bit about what happened last week in Washington? Oh, man. 
devastating. Yeah. And de- Thirty-three devastating. years to the day. Not only that. Do you want to hear some other alarming stats? Same yard yeah, line. Go ahead. Oh God, I didn't know that. Same final score. Wow. Thir- Thirty-three years to the day. Whew. Same exact two bones. Oh my goodness! I mean, it's kind of eerie. How spooky and, is that? And the fact that Theismann was actually in he the house. He was there. Yeah. yeah. I saw him. And I, I, mean, I tell you something else. What happened too? Uh, Romeo Cannell was an assistant coach. Oh wow! Oh, this is just getting more weirder by the minute. <laughs> but a devastating injury, obviously. Um, Washington still came back and could have won that game. And the thing about this game this week, when I first saw the spread, I didn't know, I didn't catch all of the. I was on the road driving driving home from Cali, so I didn't catch all the happenings until the next day but when i first saw the spread at eight points i was shocked that dallas was laying eight points and then when i heard uh that's the smith was out then i i kind of understood a little bit but i still think that washington covers that game and could potentially win the game because washington is winning games not because of their offense it's because of their defense yeah and uh you know i <laughs> And once again, they're they're in that cannibal division yep. of the NFC East, where he, well, I guess we can rule out the Giants, although they feel that somehow they can, you know, still still win this division. Scary thing is, they might. Yeah, I'm just lying. At the right, they right. actually said that. Yeah, well, that's that, I'm they, just they did. That. They did put it out that they believe that they can go eight and eight. Yeah. Well, they've got to start this weekend against Philly, and I think Philly's going to be kind of they're going to be a little bit snippy after getting manhandled by the Saints. Um, so I think they have something to prove to uh, to their fans against the Giants, and what better team? Uh, right, right. And, and I think uh, the Washington Redskins really uh, got messed up because that Josh Norman call, like that was time on the clock, but they gave them a first down that one play, and they should have got a. Uh, they should have been four and out. They got the ball with a lot more time on the clock, but uh, the referee gave them a. A horrible uh, uh, pass interference call, and they right there just messed them up a, a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, nobody should be surprised at pass interference calls anymore. Or whole defensive holding. Um, right. It just, it just they just seem to manifest themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, and if I'm a uh, offensive coordinator and it's fourth, and I'm throwing the ball in the middle of the might field, just, might as well. Yeah. And we talked about that in, in the preseason. Yeah. About just throwing the ball up there because of the way that they're calling the calls. Yeah, you got a you got a shot. Somebody's going to grab or pull on somebody, and the flag's going to get thrown. And it's you know five yards and automatic first down. Yep. Can so, y'all please relay that message to my Titans, please? Because they <laughs> for some reason just can't get that memo. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I really like Mariota, and I, I kind of wish that he would, you know, kind of he he always hasn't had the supporting cast, and when you really think about it, you know, he's got Henry as a running back. But, you know, he's never really had somebody – you know, he, he kind of had a couple running backs at the tail end of their careers, um, Chris Johnson uh-huh. and uh, and uh, the good dude from Dallas. Uh, Mar- uh, Mar- uh, DeMarco Murray. DeMarco, DeMarco Murray, yeah. Murray, yeah. So um, I kind of wish that they would kind of get some people around him. You know, I mean, he, yeah. he, he exactly. gets kind of like B, B-rated receivers, you know. And, right. And, and it's kind of like, you know, put some put – some, talent around this guy and see what he can do yeah right you know, and uh, but it, you know. it all starts up front i mean if if you got two seconds to throw it or one second uh it doesn't matter who you got there wide receiver That's i mean because he is getting pummeled back there yeah and he's been set more times in nine games already than he did in 2017 and 16 wow yeah he is getting that's unbelievable. Yeah, he's getting he's getting that's pummeled a, back yeah there. that's it's, a difficult step well what's uh what's the latest on his elbow uh, his elbow was still, um, it was a stinger. Okay. okay. And so it wasn't uh, the ulnar nerve uh, from the previous injury, but the coach saw it real quick. I mean, the offensive line was not blocking. They were just getting back there like Charmin toilet paper, just getting back to their easy. Yeah. And they were just hammering them down. And so the coach just went on, hey, hey this is not the game. Just don't stay out. You, you don't, you don't think of don't get take a chance of getting hurt anymore. So, yeah, well, you it know was what? Awful. He probably made the right move. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, unfortunately, we've seen what happens when coaches uh, don't uh, when it comes to like a you know an injury of some kind. Um, I think what they might want to do is get some of the old um, 
the Quinn Campbell tapes when he was protecting Mello. Yeah. Uh, That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, hey y'all want to know something? That's the first time I really played the offensive line out there. Oh, yeah? I ne- yeah, well, see, you know, uh, I'm eating all these uh, good steaks and potatoes down here, you know, and I put on a little extra weight, you know, so. <laughs> I- <I've laughs> that helps. Played- <laughs> I- I've always played uh, – like a, a fullback, linebacker, and, and maybe the tight end. But offensive line, not really. You know, but like I said, I, I put on weight over the years, and uh, that's what got me stuck on the uh, O-line right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was good. It was a good thing anyway. So the other two games we got on Thanksgiving, we got um, Did New we talk Orleans. about the Bears? and? Uh... No, let's talk about them last. Cause, oh, okay. Cause we, got, we got some <laughs> stuff to say about them. So we got New Orleans and Atlanta. Last time was a shootout, last time they played. Yeah. I mean, we, we were supposed to have Torrance on. He's not going to be calling in. So we're going to keep you on. Is that okay, Quinn? Yeah, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. So the last yeah. time they played, um, that game was a shootout. Oh, yeah. Obviously, there was a lot more at stake for um, Atlanta. For, for Atlanta. Well, no, Atlanta needs the win if they're going to keep pace. Yeah. Right now, what the Saints are trying to do is get a home, some home, home field. field. Right. You know, so like with, with uh, Rams keep – continuing to win it's important that that they pick they up this game win, yeah because this is right. where they could both be 10 and 1 at the end of the game so what do you, where do you guys see this game um um new orleans saints uh not even close they're they clicking on all cylinders right now all systems go and they are throwing the ball down the field you got kamar you got ingram I mean, you got weapons all over the field with uh drew Brees. what drew Brees like 39 years old now yep something like that, and he's still just throwing the ball all over the place. So, they clicking on all the cylinders. Uh, New Orleans in, in the easy win is my choice. Yeah, I um, I really don't see how uh, New Orleans could screw this one up. Um, I, <laughs> I really do believe that the, the desperate team out there on the field is Atlanta. Um, right. Yeah. They uh, they were poised to be 6-4 and four going into this game. And instead, you know, I mean, Jesus, they made the Cowboys look really good. And mm-hmm. that's, that's, which that's, is tough. which is tough. I mean, that is, <laughs> you know, and then of course now, you know, all of the Cowboy fans, they've, they've, you know, come out from under the covers uh, the last couple of weeks, you yeah. know, and, uh, you know, the, how about them Cowboys? You know, I so, say, yeah, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Because if there's ever a team that just disappoints, yeah. <laughs> it's the Dallas Cowboys. But I think Atlanta's <laughs> desperate. They got to go in there, and they cannot afford to get down early. Yeah, um, you know because this is not the Saints' defense from, you know, three or four years ago, where you know Breeze was basically he had to put up forty just to ensure they'd win, or had a chance of winning. Yeah, uh, you know this is uh, they're 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 playing really really well. But I think that the Falcons again, they're just underachievers. Uh, so I, yeah, I think the Saints are going to win. And I really think the Saints may go to the Super Bowl because look at last year. They was just a, a whiff tackle away from moving forward last year. Yep, um, So, like I said, uh, to this day, I still don't know how that play happened. <laughs> how you going <laughs> to miss that tackle? I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't grab it. But, uh, like I said, I still think the Saints is going to go uh, um, to the Super Bowl this year. That's my pick. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to – stretch out a little bit and i'm going to take atlanta plus the points in this game okay and, and i'm going to tell you why atlanta if you remember earlier in the season when they played that game went to overtime and uh the saints got the ball first in overtime it was tied at 37 at the at the end of the regulation and the saints went right down the field and scored a touchdown so it up until that last drive i mean it was pretty much back and forth action and, and you're talking about a couple of players that are playing really well um, Matt Ryan's playing decent. Julio Jones has been absolutely killing it. So um, imagine this dude having a big game. But the, the thing about Atlanta is they're so balanced. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the Saints, are, they're so balanced. I was going to say, were we, are we yeah. talking about the Falcons? Or? Okay. The, the Saints, I've, their offense is probably the most consistent run-pass offense. And you almost don't want Breeze to be throwing the ball, but – if he's not, then you have Camaro that's like been killing it as well. Yeah, you know, so they they're just like a force. I do think that they can be scored on. the The, the opening line of this game was fifty eight. It's up to sixty one. 
Obviously, a lot of other people think it's going to be a shootout as well, um, which it very well could be. I mean, they scored, what, 80 points in the last game? So um, <laughs> I'm just going to take Atlanta. I just think I'm a, they're going to cover the spread at 14, but they're going to lose the game. And I kind of want the Saints just to win out. You know, I'd really like to see a playoff game between the Rams and Saints to see who goes. Oh, yeah. man. Absolutely. Ooh. Yeah, and then you, you're, if you really think about it, on the other side of that, you, we could have the Patriots and the Chiefs playing again, you know, rematch yeah. to, for that, to, for that um, you know, Super Bowl. So let's go to the last game. We got about, what, about 12 minutes or so? Um, Detroit in Chicago. So a few weeks back when you, you were out and Jabari came in, and I basically said – that Chicago was going to win the first game and then Detroit was going to win on Thanksgiving. Jabari thought I was crazy. He, he thinks Chicago is going to win both games. But as it sits, Trubisky is going to be out and they're going to start Chase Daniel. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Chase Daniel, which oh boy, we were just kind of – Bill and I were talking about this before <laughs> the game. I mean, before the show. So I just like – you know, I know who the guy is, but like I don't – you know, I'm like, hey, let me check out this guy's career. He's played nine years yeah. in the NFL. Yes. He's got a total of 480 yards passing. Yeah. <laughs> in one game, he had 250, 249, 48 yards or whatever. Which puts an exclamation point on that. So if you Born subtract that one game, he has not even 200 yards of passing. Over nine years. Eight years. In eight years. Eight years, yeah. That, that and is, then you're uh, going to start him against a Detroit team that's actually poor. I mean, defensively, you can't – I mean, I don't think – I think they have at least two or three guys out in the secondary. But, I mean, are you just going to rely on your defense? First of all, we talked about this before the show. Mm-hmm. How do you not have another quarterback besides Chase Daniel on your roster? <laughs> you know, I don't know. And uh, we were sitting here – we were mulling over some – you know, so what ifs? And, you know, my theory, of course, is that Chase had been a backup for Drew Brees. Right. So they felt that if New Orleans took a flyer on him, so should they. Yeah. Okay, that's the simplistic That's not, That makes sense. Reason. I mean, he's running Saints second team for four years. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's he's, 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 he's seen a lot. <laughs> Just not a lot of action, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's seen a lot. Uh, other I, than, I, other than that, for? I think it's just, uh, you know, the, the it just says the level of the uh, – uh, the the nonsense going on in the, the the Bears brain trust that they you know that they just po- didn't possibly see this happening right at at some point. Well, I mean, almost every quarterback has been at least knocked out of for some plays. Yes, I mean, literally almost every single quarterback at some point. So how do you not have like somebody? How do you have Chase Daniel as your your guy? Who is their third string by by the way? Well, maybe they were just looking at his uh, length of time in the NFL. Could be. No, he's a veteran. Nine years. He's a veteran. Get him in here. I um, tell you. I tell you what I need, guys. I need his agent. I mean, because that is yeah. he got the best job in the world. Well, he's, he's, been well, a, he's yeah. had a job for nine years straight. <laughs> yeah. No injuries. You yeah. know, and just holding the clipboard with his hat turned backwards. I yeah. mean, that is the absolute best job in the world. I yeah. need his agent. Well, for one thing, he's certainly <laughs> fresh. Okay, he should be. <laughs> he's he's rested. He's healthy, and uh, you know, and so. But I'm, th- you know, but you're right. Uh, you know, I I think that sometimes these guys they get they're on that list, that short list of hey, we need to sign somebody. Who's out there? Now we found out that Washington <laughs> believes that Mark Sanchez is. Oh uh, my it, He's 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 going to be a suitable backup. And again, I think it's you know the you know I I don't know where he's been sitting. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know he's he's now you know trying to pick up that that playbook just in case. You know, and uh, hey, you know, crazier things have happened. But I this this deal with Trubisky is is uh, mind boggling. But good old Chase. Okay. So, so so here's the backup. I found it. Taylor Bray. Oh my God! He's in Tennessee. That's, so oh, that's, really? That's their third show. Are you serious? Yep. Oh, my god. They goodness. said they, they elevated him on Thursday from the practice squad to be on the active roster. The dude was horrible. <laughs> he, he wasn't that good here. That, that's what I'm saying. And, like, this is why Nathan Peterman still gets calls from people, I guess. I, you know, I don't, they I'm must at, have I'm somebody in the NFL in their family or something. I, I don't get it. How they keep getting these jobs. 
<laughs> well, well, I can tell you this. I, I picked the Lions to win. I'm going to stick with that pick. I'm going to take them on the money line. And actually, I might throw just for fun. I might throw like 20 on all three <laughs> of those games' 20, money line. A couple of saw bucks on it. Yeah, just yeah. just all three of those games. I'm going to take. I'm going to take Atlanta. Yeah. Maybe plus the points, but maybe I'll throw it out there on the money line just to get crazy. Uh huh. And then take Washington money line. Yeah. And Detroit take Detroit money line. And take okay. See well, if we can get some big chuck, like uh, get some of these uh, big dogs to cover. Now that we know who's uh, <laughs> who's behind Trubisky. Um, I, I, well, listen, I'm going to go with the Lions. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I think that the Lions are going to win this game. And, uh, you know, you had a chance. You said that Stafford uh, was. Uh, Stafford four, won four to last five. Last five on Thursday. Averaging on Thanksgiving. 390 yards passing. So he has big games. games on Thanksgiving. Yep. And I think that well, he. Well, there's one person still there, guys. Yeah. Khalil Mack. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, Khalil Mack has been just, just tearing it up. Yeah. And I think every time he walks out there in the Bears uniform, they're pulling people in Oakland off the ledge. Um, <laughs> what could have been, you know? And uh, you know, and he is just proving that he he was he was certainly worth the money, and what oh, he yeah. has done to turn around that whole Bears defensive group. Yeah, you know, he is the de facto leader of that defense, and it kind of you know harkens back to the old uh, you know. Uh, the beast of the midway, you know, uh, you know when they had their Super Bowl years. So, you know, and it was a, it was a shame that Trubisky went down, uh, yeah. Because you know, I think that you know he's he's proving the naysayers who were like, this guy had ten career games with uh, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And uh, and they you know uh, selected him as high as they did, and, and he has proven to be you know with the two pick, the number two pick, right? Yeah. Then they go Baker and then him. And so then, but they're proving that, you know, and because he's not on a, a offensive team that is overly talented. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's got some quality receivers. Don't get me wrong. Oh, he's got two good running backs, too. I mean, both Cohen and, and, and Howard are great yeah. backs. But I think with now with the addition of the defense, <clears throat> they know that they're always going to be in these games. Yep. So, yeah. so speaking of, we were talking a little bit about um, if, you, if you have some fantasy running backs, either one of those Chicago running backs, you probably want to start them. Because I mean, they're, they're definitely going to get some action this week, and luckily for me, is is uh, I actually do have one of those running backs, so I'm, I'm okay. hoping that Cohen Cohen goes off. And uh, are you saying that the Lions, uh, you know, uh, running def their defense against the run is they're suspect. porous? They're, they're complete. They're complete defensive suspect. And, and being a Lions fan, when when Patricia when Patricia was um, was came on and announced as the coach, I was actually really excited because I was thinking finally. We got a defensive coach, you know, since Wayne Fonts is the last time we had a defensive coach. Um, you know, Jim wow. Schwartz. Wow, I heard the name a long time. Yeah, Jim Schwartz wow. was, a, was, a de was a defensive coach when he came in, but it, that team was all off offensive firepower and, yeah. and whatnot. I mean, he didn't really focus too much on it. So I was really hoping that this was the year they were going to come back. They got all kinds of weapons. Marvin Jones is juniors out this, this game as well. So I'm going to watch. Oh well, yeah, you, you have to I'll watch. watch them all. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then and then how did this a this is a question? How did CBS get the Lions and the Bears game? Just out of curiosity. Oh man, that doesn't. You know what? I think they uh, traditionally have the Thanksgiving. Yeah, but usually yeah. the Thanksgiving game, the first game is always the Lions, and it's always on Fox. Right. Yeah. yeah well, I think is uh, the uh, I think they swapped with. Uh, uh, Fox because of the, um, the skins and uh, Dallas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dallas always plays as well. But... Yeah, because technically they're all um, NFC games, NFC right. teams, which is kind of bizarre for you know Thanksgiving. You think that one AFC team would land in there? Well, some usually way, what happens is that the one of the two, uh, either the Lions or the or the. Uh, Dallas play an AFC team, and that's how it ends up on the other network. Yeah. But for some reason, that's the first time I've ever seen the Lions play on CBS on Thanksgiving. So. Well, I always look forward to it, that's for sure. There's always a nap in there somewhere, yeah. you know, in between or d even during a real bad game. Yeah. You know, you can imagine the Lions one it'll, in it'll there. Be the, it'll be the uh, Cowboys game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you guys see any uh, hot picks? You guys have one outside of the Thanksgiving game. Uh, give me each of your uh, your hot picks for the NF, uh, NFL this uh, this weekend. 
pick a game, any first, game, yeah. and say that's your game. Oh man, you you gonna put me out there first? I will say. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I will. Well, I'm gonna get. I'll give two games. Okay, so a few weeks back, I said that the Jets will be the worst team at the end of the year, and I'm sticking to that. They play New England this week. New England's going to absolutely crush the Jets. That's number one. The other game is Carolina. Carolina's five and zero at home. They don't play that well on the road. They should have they should have won in Detroit last week. They missed an extra point, which forced them to go for two. They didn't get it. That's why they ended up losing. Which I still, you know, kind of questioning the fact that you know coaches still do that when they could tie the game. But um, they obviously felt confident with Cam Newton. Um, I I think that they and not very confident in their kicker. Gano had already missed a an extra point. He had missed a short field goal. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that uh, they were really. Uh, you know, I think it was a coin toss. But there's somehow that nonsense about, well, uh, Detroit had three timeouts and a minute 07 left and they were at home. I'm thinking like, well, your defense is really better than your offense. Uh, you know, give them a shot at least. Yeah. So the other one that I'm going to go with is the Colts. I'm going to take the Colts. Um, the Colts have been – Andrew Luck is th- – what I think he's like four or five games with three touchdowns. Passes. Playing very choke, well. Yeah. What's that? You making me choke over here? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I know that Galatians those play. those interconference games are uh, <laughs> are a little tough sometimes, but just the way he's playing right now, he's just been he's just been playing lights out. And you know they're playing a Miami team. I don't I don't really think that they even know who they are, in a sense. So right. I, okay. I really think that um, that Indianapolis will win that game pretty handily. All righty, Quentin. Yeah, well, uh, speaking of the Colts, since they uh, blowed us out pretty good, they we didn't even touch Andrew Luck. He has not been sacked in like the last five games. Yeah, <laughs> and we could not even touch him. We couldn't get close to him. And I've always liked Andrew Luck, and I was scared when he got picked by the Colts that he was going to be dominant. And the Titans have not beat him in ten games. He's ten and zero against the Titans. Yes, he is. <laughs> so. Wow. So Andrew Luck, he just he just a thorn in our side. We just can't get him away. Uh, so the other coach, uh, they're, they're rocking and rolling right now. I gotta stick. I gotta go with them. Um, I gotta feel y'all. I, I don't know why. I've been a fan of the Cleveland Browns, guys. I, like I said, you know, I've been wanting them to turn it around. And I really think they're gonna beat the Bengals this week. Uh, honestly, I never was really a Baker Mayfield fan because of his attitude. But but the guy can play football, you Absolutely. know. And, yes, he can. And once they get the pieces put around him, and they got their guy now. now he is a franchise quarterback, and they've been shuffling quarterbacks for years and years. But I think they really got the guy now. Well, when you got um, a guy, when you have Drew Brees saying that he could be better than me, you know that's Drew Brees oh, wow. saying that about yeah. Baker Mayfield. That's pretty. Uh, that's a pretty good compliment. All right, Quentin. We just have a few seconds here, and one th- question we always want to get in, and and that is. Uh, Super Bowl 2019, we want to know who your AFC team is going to be, who the NFC team is going to be, and who's going to win it all. And you can't say Tennessee. Can you say who? Tennessee. Uh, no. You no, can say <laughs> You say whatever you want. <laughs> no, that's, that's not happening. Uh, but I, I still think we can make the playoffs, though. But the NFC, who the Saints and Rams? I, I got to say the Saints. Um, okay. Because of the experience, the Drew Brees, you got the the two headed monsters in the backfield, and I, I think they can pull it off. You know, okay. it just depends on how healthy uh, the Rams defense get by then. If Cavallo's back, to leave and all this back, uh, but you might have to go with the Rams. Yeah, and, and then with the AFC, um, right now I got to go with the Chiefs. Uh, uh-huh. I, I love what Mahomes is doing, and. Uh, but like I said, we just got to see what Andy Reid can do in the winter. You know, and a lot of times in the winter months, uh, they struggle. So, and again, like last year, I, I hate to bring it up, with Tennessee, they was up 21-3 to against us last year. And look what happened. We came back and got them. So, everybody in Kansas City, they are excited, but they kind of got it in the back of their head. Like, eh, let's just see what to the playoffs. But <laughs> I think uh, he made a great job with Mahomes, uh, letting Smith go. Unfortunately, that injury happened to him, but I, I see them going there. Nice. Yeah. All right, and who's going to win it all? The Rams. I, I think the Rams are going. 
I'm just keeping I'm keeping the Saints. I'm sorry. I think the Saints are really going to do it this year, and uh, and uh, I'm a Drew Brees fan, and I like what he's doing. I think they're going to do it. All right. So that'd be a good Miller household, you know, with you and uh, Jay watching the game if oh, the, yeah. the Chiefs played the Saints. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> those are, that's, that's him and his son's team. Oh, my cool. son is a diehard Saints fan. I mean, yeah. Well, Quentin, yeah, thank I'm, you. Yeah. Quentin, we can't thank you again, man, for you know coming on to the show, taking time out of your night. Uh, it's almost 9 o'clock there, or it's almost 10? It's almost 9 o'clock here. We yeah. went Central Time over here. Okay. So, But, guys, I really appreciate it, and um, I'd love to come back and talk to you guys um, every week. You let me. Well, listen, man, we will definitely want to get you on, you know, uh, east of the Mississippi, man. I mean, <laughs> EOM, baby. That's, that's right, it. Right. And talk about your real estate business, brother. <laughs> All right, great. All right. Like I said, we are, uh, like, doing great things over here. Tennessee is real hot, you know. Uh, like, so here in Nashville area, it's like 100 people moving here a day. Wow. And it is just absolutely insane. And, uh, like I said, I just filmed another um, HGTV show uh, yesterday. Uh, it's pretty good. And, like I said, just, you know, just trying to make things happen down here. Absolutely. Well, listen, we definitely want to have you back on, man, and we want to talk a bit, a lot more about uh, the, the real estate market there and your business. Yeah, but, you, you know, for you and your family and friends, have a very happy Thanksgiving. Very happy Thanksgiving to all you guys, and um, I'll talk to you all soon. All right. Have a good Take night. care now. Thanks, boss. All right, bye-bye. All righty. Quentin Campbell, former Vegas Kings football player and now realtor in Nashville, Tennessee. East of the Mississippi. Yep. All right. This uh, once again, this hour has uh, flown by. I'd like to thank uh, John Styles, the owner, head engineer, Hancho here for once again keeping the doors open and the lights on, man. And we wish everyone out there a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. Enjoy it with family and friends. And join us next Wednesday, November twenty eighth, six p.m. Pacific Standard Time for another edition of Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from wwdbtv.com. Have a great week. God bless.